This week on Rugged Expeditions, the Konya Mouflon is only found in this one small area of Turkey. They only issue very few limited permits to hunt them, and I was lucky enough to get my hands on one. It was time to pack up our bags, load up the truck, and head over to the area where they said they'd had some great sightings of the elusive hybrid ibex. We've come all the way around from where we were on that other side of the mountain. Looking back on this cliff face, the ibex are that we saw are over this next drop off here. Down below him, to the right and below. Presented by Safari Club International. First for hunters. Life in these Turkish villages out in the middle of nowhere is pretty laid back. It's a long winding road going through the ancient villages of Turkey. Half the time we had to make sure we didn't run into any sheep or other domestic animals that might hold us up. You come in from the main town, we're out here in a smaller village here in the outskirts, and you'll see that there's some mountains up here behind us. Boy, there's more turkeys over there. This place is crawling with turkeys. No wonder they call it turkey. Let's go check them out. Hold still, they're coming in. I'm gonna take the long beard. I think they're in love. Stopping in at one of the houses in a village that we passed through, the gentleman that owned the place wanted to show us his prized sheep, which he kept in his house. Ah, it's the manger scene. Hi, guys. It was obvious right away, though, when I opened up the door that the sheep were safe because they had one of the biggest dogs I've ever seen in my life come bailing out of that thing. Uh-oh. He doesn't have his spike collar on, thank God. There's a boy. There's a boy. Yeah. Yeah. Easy, Rover. Easy. There's a good boy. There's a good boy. <laughs> These big, massive sheepdogs wear a spiked collar. The point of it is that there's still a lot of wolves hanging out there and chasing after the domestic sheep. So when these dogs take on a wolf and the wolf tries to go for his throat, that wolf's gonna grab a mouthful of spikes. That's a dog right there now. That dog can hunt. Before we went out for the day's hunt, we were greeted by the local game scouts and the game department. They gave us a beautiful breakfast of cheese and olives and meats and the great Turkish bread. Getting out after the Konya Mouflon. Cheers. Mount hunting for different species can be different just depending on the type of terrain you're hunting in. In the case of the Konya Mouflon, where it's wide open, kind of reminds me of hunting in Western America where you've got the dry desert sagebrush type of an area. There's nothing to hide behind. And as you're coming up over the rolling hills, these animals are seeing you from a long distance and they've really got the advantage on you. The Konya Mouflon is only found in this one small area of Turkey. They only issue very few limited permits to hunt them, and I was lucky enough to get my hands on one. They're all through these hills right here. We've got a, a nice band we've been looking at. You can see how wide open it is. There's really nothing that you can do to except find a valley to do the sneaky sneak on them. So we're gonna try and cut over and this is gonna take a perfect setup, I think, on these. But there's a monster in there, so. That's them, that big one's down there. What?
Nah, they're just small ones, huh? Those four. Those ones there are too small. That one's probably a seven, eight year old, it looks like, but with these Kanye, they'll get a lot bigger than that, so. Plus it's early, we got some time. But they're gonna grow up and be big one day. Wolf kill. It's kind of strange to think that wolves are still a problem here in Turkey, but obviously they are. This one is just killed in the last day or so, huh? It's not that old. The meat's still fresh back here, boy. They picked it clean between the eagles and the wolves. There's not much left of this guy. All right, let's go see what we got for sheep. Live ones. I see that is it, there's six, huh? I see, he's got... You have to shoot the right one. on the body. Okay, I got one face in this way. There's two yeah. together in that long grass. Uh -huh. but he's the one he's, on the right. Yes, now he's moving the head. Can you see him? I can barely. I got a but He's in the grass, but yes. I think. I, I got the one on the left here. Uh -huh. Okay, there he is. Okay. Yeah. Right. Horse like hook. Can you see him? Yeah, they're hooking down okay. low. That's him. Okay, hold on. Here. <laughs> Good shot, man! Hey, it's the job! Well done! Very good. Congratulations, huh? He's gone up over the hill, but that very, felt pretty good. Shot, yeah. Yeah. Whew. Let's go. Awesome. Let's Let's go. Let's see go. that thing. Let's go. We walked down to where we'd last seen the sheep okay. before they disappeared behind another mountain. And it was then that I started questioning our tactic. So we've already walked three ridges over this ridge that you can see behind us right now. We had blood, we were following it along and the blood dried up. We'd seen the whole herd come over this way, you know, running, 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 thinking, okay, they gotta go. So we made the mistake of just following the herd, didn't we? Yes, we did. So now, one of the guys has gone back up the hill. He had come around from the top side that saw them earlier scouting for us. He just whistled to us to tell us that we've got a dead sheep back up on the top of that mountain. So. We need to go back, I guess. I guess we gotta climb back up there and go get him, huh? And what's the lesson we should learn here? Never leave the blood trail is my guess. <laughs> I agree. Look at that. <laughs> oh my God. Look at this thing. Oh, this is like dinosaur, man. Oh. It's very, very big. Hey, look at that. Wow. Wow. There's a sheep, huh? Hey, congratulations, Ellen. Good congratulations, job. Ellen. Good job. Very good job. Ellen. What a monster. Kanye Mouflon, huh? Awesome trophy. Yes. 13 years old. Yes. And this is the reserve where they've been maintaining the herd and keeping yes. them healthy. And, yes. But they're having a little bit of trouble with them right now, I understand. But they're... Yeah. Uh, the money that we spend on this hunting, though, is the kind of money that helps to conserve these animals because if we're not coming here, they've got very little budget for taking care of these animals, huh? Yeah, this helps them a lot. Yeah. This helps the conservation a lot. Issuing a few permits per year, very few, allows a couple people to come hunting, but yet helps to maintain the herd's balance and their health and take a few old ones like this out. After our success with that tremendous Konya Mouflon, it was time to pack up our bags, load up the truck, and head over to the area where they said they'd had some great sightings of the elusive hybrid Ibex. Hmm. Looks like some really close up ones right there. Not big enough? Those? Not, not for you. No? Not for you. These hybrid Ibex are a cross between a Bezor and a domestic goat. 
And what's happened is you've got these big basar that come down during the rut around these villages where there's domestic goats. And you know, nature being what it is, one thing leads to another and all of a sudden you've got a hybrid. Hunting these hybrid ibex is a lot like hunting the basar ibex. You've got steep terrain, deep canyons, and really rugged areas you gotta get into. It reminds me of when we were hunting the basor and we got into a beautiful canyon where we'd been seeing them all the way on the other side of the ridge. There was no way to get over there, so I finally had to take a long poke at one and got lucky. Look at the horns on this. The big challenge on hunting these hybrids is you'll get into a herd of animals and you've got all kinds of pure basor ibex, but we're there trying to get rid of the hybrid ibex. They were under the bush, on the left bush, under the bushes, one more and more. Yep, kind of brown and with the white legs. We got a small male over on this cliff over here. <clears throat> Not worth climbing all the way over there for. The good thing is we're seeing them and they're out moving even in this rain and this fog, so gives us hope that if we keep glassing out here that we might still catch one coming out of here. It's getting later in the afternoon now, so they're starting to get up and move around, so keep our fingers crossed. Sometimes you'll find these ones that they look pretty similar to a pure basor, but then other ones that look just like a domestic goat. We're looking for one that's got floppy ears and he's got some oddball hair growing off of his chin or something like that. <clears throat> Just like with any kind of ibex hunting, getting into the area where they're living and finding a place where you can get a shot from can be unbelievably tough. To the left, see it? That's a hybrid over there, right running. On the rocks, out to the point. This is small. At times, we were just hand over hand climbing up through stuff that sensible people wouldn't bother with. We've come all the way around from where we were on that other side of the mountain, looking back on this cliff face. The Ibex are that we saw are over this next drop off here. You can see it's great terrain for them to hide in. Plus there's lots of feeding. These males are heavy in rut right now, chasing the females around. So they're really exposing themselves to, you know, out in the open. They should be about ready to lay down now, but they're not laying down at all. They're still moving. So today's our day. Far is he? So that's uh, three, three hundred ish. Okay. He's facing right. The black one. He's got his face turned towards us now. Okay, ready. Okay, just right. Got him? Yes. <laughs> well done. Well done. That was so. He just went. It looked like he just went down, huh? Yeah. He fell? Yeah. Awesome. Down in that hole? <sighs> Good eyes. Way to go. Way to spot him. Man, that was hard to see down there in that. <laughs> They are down in that shadow. And there was a couple other big ones in there with us, huh? Yeah. The, the, but they're normal. 
They were all purebred. It never fails when you're looking for the one that's got the floppy ears and the black color, then there's a big, huge one. That one was nice. So now we got to figure out how we're going to get down there and haul them out, huh? It's got to be right down in here. This is the two trees that we could see from up on the top. We shot from up there at that pinnacle you can see behind. So that big one that we saw, the pure one, he was right below this tree. So we're just down here. Hopefully he should be down over here in this next spot, but it's a little treacherous getting down here. One of these things like this steep country. He's going here. Huh? Hey, there we go. <laughs> ah, well done. All right. Let's see. Nice. Nice. Ah, look at him, huh? The hybrid. Look at him. he's got a mane here, huh? And he's got his floppy ears. A hybrid ibex, huh? Well, he's got long hair like a regular goat, but he's got the markings still. He's dark, but he's got the markings of a uh, ibex, but he's you know definitely got the darker coat of a domestic. Got the horns of an ibex with a bit of a flare of the domestic. Perfect specimen of a hybrid ibex. Oh, yeah. A lot of work for a mountain goat. Getting to put your hands on a tremendous trophy like that is what makes all that climbing and all that work worthwhile. Getting to do it in a very exotic locale is just an added bonus. The people that you get to meet, the culture you get to experience, makes all the travel and all the headaches worthwhile.